in my search for multimeters that are not way out of uh, the world on pricing and have functionality and safety that uh, might rival Fluke and better them on features, I came across this multimeter and I thought from based on the specifications, uh, the cat rating, the uh, types of fuses inside, the general construction and uh, the accuracy of it that this would be a good multimeter. It costs $235 US plus shipping from a couple of different companies in the US right now and uh, so I thought I would get one of these. I'm interested in uh, alternatives to spending the big money for other multimeters and I received this multimeter as my first one. Um, I think you can see that there is a problem. I have them both selected on uh, capacitance range and with any multimeter that's functioning correctly uh, when you have it on a range like this you should see some residual capacitance that you have to relative out on your measurements. Well as you can see in this case this one is not even close to being correct. So um, you think okay maybe it's just the leads. Well it isn't the leads because uh, if I plug in leads here These are the leads that the meter comes with, by the way. You can see nothing changed. If I plug in the leads into my replacement meter, which is supposed to be perfect, and you'll see that it's not later on, yes, the capacitance goes up. That's the way it should be, and then you need to rel out your meter, and then you can use it to measure different things. So, yes, this one is not working cor correctly on the capacitance. This is the first meter I received, but that's not the only problem that this one had. So let's see what the other problems are. We'll put this one aside for a moment and we will see what problems I had with this multimeter. Now, generally it's a, it's, it feels pretty good in the hand. It's a different type of construction. This, uh, this rubber on the outside is kind of a hard vinyl kind of feeling thing, not a nice gummy gummy uh, rubber that you might find on, uh, for example, my Bryman here. Bryman has this nice holster on the outside, very thick rubber, you know, it's for good protection. The UEI DM397 though has this molded on kind of hard plastic. It's, it's not going to really uh, protect the internals of the meters as well as this, but it'll prevent the outside from cracking if it hits the ground. Now, the uh, problem I had with this one is, yeah, it felt kind of uh, different, so I gave it a shake, and originally I just heard the battery shaking, but I heard a little bit of a, um, a lighter sound on the inside that didn't sound like it was just a battery, something a little bit more serious, so I decided to take it apart. Now, the overall construction of this is, is not that bad. Uh, this is a captive screw for the battery compartment. You lever the battery compartment off. You can see it's, uh, it looks very nice. You have battery contained in here. They could have put a piece of rubber or something in here or foam to keep it from bouncing around. That would have been a lot nicer. Two very uh, nice fuses here accessible without taking the battery or the whole, the whole meter apart. You just need to take the battery cover off. Um, but as I was investigating, now let's take the, the bale off. That's one of these other bales that it'll pop off, it won't break. Um, I was investigating and started taking things apart and I heard the rattling around inside and I noticed there was a screw missing here. So I thought I better investigate a little bit more and so I took apart the meter. I'll take out these screws here. This won't take too long. What I like is that these screws are nice big screws. They uh, don't go into metal receivers, but while well, this thing really is held together very nicely, sometimes you have to get these back these screws out a little bit more than you think. And 
They go into metal inserts inside, way down inside. They're captive screws. So that's very nicely constructed. But I found that screw that was missing here rattling around inside here. And so I thought I would investigate a bit and I was just touching things and I noticed, and you can see here, oops, there we go. Let's get the angle right so we don't have too much light. You can see these clips here are really not holding. They should be nice and tight like this. And I noticed, okay, so uh, the screw came out, these clips uh, which hold everything together were kind of loose. What was going on here? So I thought I'd take things apart here. Oops, I forgot to take, I need to take this screw out. These are the only two screws that hold the circuit board into place here. So take the screw out, take the circuit board out. It's a nice construction overall, but these plastic clips that hold this whole front assembly on the side, you can see, well, I don't know if you can really see it that easily, but they they were cracked and they're not holding firmly. You can see that the circuit board is not being held firmly against the LCD assembly on the front. So let's take that off and see what's going on. Now, that's the cover for the IR port I just took off there so it doesn't fall off. So let's take this apart here. Oops, that one's already broken, I forgot. And so these clips, these clips here, are the only things holding this on the front and holding the zebra stripes for the LCD to the uh, to the circuit board. So these two things um, made me uh, contact uh, the company where I bought the, the uh, multimeter from and I also emailed UEI directly and asked them what they thought they might do for me. And uh, I was very pleased with their response. They said, no problem, we will send you a new multimeter, no cost to you. Uh, We'll send you an extra lead kit with it uh, because I also have a complaint about the, the leads. Oh, I just noticed something I didn't notice before. There is some black residue on the inside of here, which I hadn't seen before. I wonder what that's from. That's strange. Okay, so that's another thing I didn't notice before. Anyways, uh, this meter worked generally okay on all the ranges. Everything worked fine within spec except for uh, the capacitance uh, is blind to anything below 50 picofarad. It wouldn't show anything until you went and it was always out 50 picofarad. Um, the other thing is, is the temperature measurement is way out. You plug in the, th the thermocouple it came with and at uh, 25 degree room temperature, it's showing 45 degrees C. So something was really wrong with that multimeter and so I put it aside and waited for my my replacement, which showed up two days ago. Now, the replacement here, uh, there are no problems with the construction inside. It's built exactly the same way as the other one, of course. Uh, everything was intact. I saw no uh, any, any signs of damage or any kind of impact. Um, so I thought I would check this out on accuracy to see how it, how it was behaving. The other one was within, within spec, but this one, isn't even close on a couple of things. So uh, the first thing I measured, of course, is I have my DMM check here. So I turned everything on, set it for DC. Unfortunately, this one you have to reset it to DC every time you want to uh, check that range or put it on that range. It's uh, DC volts or AC volts or AC millivolts or DC millivolts. When you put it on millivolts, it's DC. You put it up to normal volts, it defaults to AC. No big deal. It's just one button push, but if you're not used to it, it's a little annoying at first. So here we go. DC voltage measurement. This should read exactly five volts. Now, the thing is, is our temperature here, or my temperature, is a little bit above uh, the standard range, what this should be for, this is uh, for 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now it's somewhere up around 80 degrees, so uh, this should read high a little bit. But when you measure it, you can see it's reading way low. Now, at this measurement, 4.9961, uh, 
that relates to if you were to take this at exactly 5 volts, which is closer to 5.0002 volts right now, if you were to take this at 5 volts, that measurement is worse than 0.076% measurement error. And this meter is supposed to be 0.05%, plus or minus uh, two digits at that range. So even if you take into account the two digit error, this thing is still out by at least 0.05% when it's supposed to be 0.05%. And it basically holds this across the whole range. R around 10 volts, it gets closer to its spec, but as you go higher again, it goes out again. So, okay, so voltage spec is out, but uh, what about milliamps? So we plug this into the current jack. Oh yes, of course, we get the warning, which is a good thing. And let's put it to microamps. And it's reading some background noise right now, of course, if I short these out. It's still picking up some things in the loop on the, the uh, lead, so we can we can uh, rel that out. Okay, and then we put it on our current measurement here. Oops. Oh, of course, this one won't auto range if you have it reled out. So let's put it on the current range, or current source here. And it's reading overflow. That's because when you do the rel, you actually have to set it back to auto range again. I forgot about that. So, auto range. Well, look at that. It's bang on. Perfect. Very happy with that. Let's put it on the milliamp range. Um, that's not right. This is around 8% out. And this is way, way out of spec. So, uh, I don't know what to say about this multimeter. Um, I have been recommending it uh, based on uh, Dave's review of the UEI he had in one of his meter shoot shootouts on the EEV blog. Um, it has great specs, great price. Uh, it comes with a, uh, a temperature probe. Where is it? It comes with a temperature probe. Um, this set of leads with, uh, where did I put those clips now? It comes with these leads with some alligator clips that go on it. Yeah, I'm, uh, my place is a little bit, there we go, here we, here we are. It comes with these clips that go on. The screw on, it's, they're okay leads, but for, for the flagship meter of uh, UEI, you would think that they would make something a little bit better than this. These uh, strain relieves are a joke. They're just uh, pretend. They've molded in some grooves here, and these do not bend at all. You're going to break them. So eventually these wires are going to fail. They feel really cheap in the hand. So it comes with some pretty cheap leads. Uh, crock clips, yeah, they're handy. Um, a temperature probe, good specs, good price. But I've had two meters now that have been two failures. They don't meet their spec. This one's way out on current, uh, the low current rate range. It's a little bit out on the, on the voltage range. The other one doesn't even work properly on capacitance nor the, uh, the temperature measurement. So I don't know what to say about this. I'm still waiting for uh, um, an email back from from UEI in the United States to see what they want to do about this, but two meters in a row that do not work correctly. And I would have expected it. Uh, the second one, which should have been inspected 100% by the person sending it, that it would come within spec at least. Uh, things don't have to be perfect, not right in the center of the spec. If it was within spec, I would have been happy. But at this point, it's not. And because of that, I'm not happy with UEI, and at this point, I would have to say that, oh, I have to select DC again, uh, something I keep forgetting. I would have to say that uh, UEI has to step up and fix some con quality control problems like I have seen with some other multimeters online on reviews. Um, and until then, I cannot recommend this multimeter Two out of two is, uh, you know, that's two samples. One sample, I can understand, you get the odd lemon, but two in a row and one that should have been inspected and, and perfect when it got to me, I have to say, 
uh, no, don't buy a UEI DM397 until there's some further resolution to this. Now, I have to say that uh, the people at UEI were concerned uh, with my complaint to them about the uh, test leads here, uh, the quality of them, and the problem I was having. So they sent me a set of their uh, higher end test lead kit. Um, I don't know the model number of this, but the leads are much, much better quality. Nice silicone leads with, uh, with voltage rating on them here. Actually, where's the number here again? These are rated for 6 kilovolt at uh, it's 18 AWG. Uh, the RUEI branded, it says here CAT 3 1000 volt, CAT 4 600 volt, where's that 500, at 10 amp. So those leads are nice and, nice and impressive. The, um, they are the type where you have mod modular probes to put on them. So yes, you can stick on these probes. These probes are very, very sharp. These are meant for piercing insulation and corrosion and those kinds of things. This is uh, for high voltage uh, panel kind of work. This is not really for electronics work. Um, they feel okay. Very stiff to go on, so they're not going to fall off in your hands. Also came with this set, set of croc clips. Again, these are more of a, an electrician's type set of probes. Uh, these have a rating on them of 600 volt cat 3 10 amp for the clock crock clips that's going to come in handy for me oh, I forgot to mention these probes they are rated at cat 3 1000 volt cat 4 600 volt nice probes for for that kind of work and then you can see there are a couple of more probes inside the package here we have these nice little grabby probes. You have little little grabbers that come out the end here. I don't know if you can see that. And silicone insulated on here. Get into some tight places. Hold on to some connectors, and then you don't have to uh, stick your hands into some tight places. That's nice. And then it also comes with these needle probes. I have. Not too sure what the needle probes would be useful for, but uh, getting down inside long contact uh, screw holes or something like that, I don't know, but it comes with this nice set of probes. So, yes, I'm happy with the test lead kit. It's a nice test lead kit. That's what the kind of quality, quality they should have provided with, with their top-of-the-line meter instead of these things that um, are worse than some probes I've seen on some 12 or 15 dollar meters so anyways uei dm397 i don't recommend you buy one of these yet until uh, there's some kind of resolution on what's going on but even then you make up your own mind my personal preference is this is not something that you want to buy this is a much better buy in my in, in my uh, opinion better better built and no problems with this one at all. So make up your own mind of what you want to do with the UEI, but uh, lots of features, good price, mm, not recommended right now.